Hey everyone, welcome to our 43rd episode of Brew Talk with Mr. Beer. My name is Robert, I'll be your host for today's show. We got a solo episode for you. I appreciate you guys taking time to watch us. Uh, hope you enjoy the episode. Thanks for tuning in every week, really appreciate it. Um, it's something that we enjoy doing, so I'd like to keep turning out the info for you. Um, before I get started, if you have any videos or anything you want to see us talk about or any guests you're going to have on, I know we'll start getting Zach and Ashley back on here again. Um, any topics you want to talk about, you want to hear them talk about or hear their thoughts on, let us know and we'll pop in and do an episode for you guys. Um, you know, we can even do a little short things. Um, you know, so we can do all kinds of stuff and basically I can do anything that we want to do, which uh, which makes it fun. So just let us know what you guys want to see. Um, also, if you are not following us on Instagram, please go over and follow us on Instagram, especially if you want to check out more like behind the scenes stuff. Um, on our Instagram stories, we post a lot of kind of things that are going on in the office and some brew room stuff and so there's some things that we're doing here so you want to see more Mr. Beer office more behind the scenes go to Instagram follow us where's at Mr. Beer um it's pretty cool stuff um uh, and something different that you don't see us on our Facebook page or on our Twitter or anything like that so make sure you follow us on Instagram last thing before I talk about the topic because I keep brushing my notes so I don't forget what I'm drinking today I am drinking American Lager Deluxe Refill I think it's been aging for a while when I looked at it I think it was actually brewed like seven eight months ago um, but that was interesting. Sometimes it's cool to taste like these beers have been sitting for so long, especially with something like the lager. I think that one's better earlier. I always like the lighter beers earlier. Just doesn't have too much flavor to it. I think it's because of the age over time, but it's not too bad, you know? A little darker, but not bad. Good beer. Carbonation, not very good. Head retention, but very bubbly. Um, all right, enough about that nonsense. Let's get into our topic today. This is an old blog post that we did on our website uh, probably like four or five years ago. Um, I think it's something that you kind of will see. We had a lot of new brewers in that have been brewing a few batches maybe. So when you go out and research like brewing with malt extract or brewing with Mr. Beer on like homebrew farms and other places, every once in a while you see someone reference this thing, this taste that you get called twang. It's like malt extract twang. When you're brewing with malt extract, you get this twang and it's kind of just something that you get. Um, so it's not, so something we hear quite often, you know, us being extract brewers, not being our main source of brewing ingredients. Um, and that's something that people talk about. However, it's not really a proof for this. It's not really, there's no truth or validity to the statement. I mean, if brewing with extract gave you a twang that every single time you brew, you'd always be able to taste that, but that's not the case. I mean, multi extract beers win awards and homebrew competitions and do all kinds of stuff. You can make some great beers with multi extract and not have that twang. So usually that twang that people may taste is usually something else that's in there that they kind of missed a step or didn't do something right that's leading to the flavors. So we kind of wanted to break down what can lead to the malt extract twang. So people keep telling you, you know, that your beer has a certain taste that has this, this twang, then the most likely culprit is something different or they just hate brew with malt extract, man. Some people are just hardcore like that. They just, they just don't like this, but that's okay. Um, you know, everyone should brew what they want and enjoy the beers they want to do. So we're going to lay out a few topics for you um, that could, you know, lead to this perceived off taste in your beer that's called twang. So it is an off flavor that you may have in your beer, but it's not due to, you know, the malt extract twang, as some people like to claim. So the first one is you want to use high quality malt extract. You're going to make sure that you're using malt extract as good quality, then you always get what you pay for. Just like anything, you know, you pay for quality the majority of the time. Um, so you're gonna get the best possible malt extract that is available. And I think how the malt extract is prepared and where the grains are sourced and all that is extremely important. So that's why Cooper's, you know, who our parent company is and who creates all of our malt extracts for us is someone who we partner with very closely. They're very committed to quality in their extracts. And that is what they are best known for. And that is why even like Cooper's, you know, malt extract is kind of a premium price for malt extract, but you're paying for what you get. Um, so a Cooper's a little, blurb about them. So they control the entire process from overseeing the grains that are in the field to the malt, you know, to the malt extract that you're using to brew with. So they take special precautions. They invest in the equipment needed to make the best quality malt extract. They have their own malting house. Um, and they also have, which is unique for malt extract, their own top of the line, low temperature evaporate, evaporator that is used to pull the moisture from the wort out. So to you, that's how you get the, the, the malt extract, that thick syrup is they pull the moisture out. There are other ways to do this that add heat, but you don't want to heat it up at that stage because what it does is it degrades the quality of the extract and then thus degrades the quality of the beer that you're getting. So you want to make sure that you're always using the best grade malt extract, which in my opinion is Mr. Beer and Cooper's, but you know, I'm not biased or anything like that. 
Uh, so make sure, just make sure that you're using fresh ingredients. If you're using expired or old malt extracts that could impact your beer, I mean, brewing with really old, like old malt extracts that are a year or two past their date, they'll be fine. You want to get new yeast, they'll be darker. But if you're brewing something that's like five, six, seven years old, that could impact the taste of your beer. So just don't judge your first brew based on that. Always judge your, your brew based on brewing something new and something fresh versus something old. Um, something else could be uh, sanitizing. You know, if you're not being thorough in all the stuff, it's easy to like forget to sanitize a spoon or something that you're using and it won't really create a super bad infection in your beer, but it will still lead to some off flavors that you can taste. So always make sure that you're sanitizing everything. Never overlook that stuff. I know it's very tedious, very monotonous. It's like just tying your shoes in the morning. Now it's just part of the process. You got to do it. Um, another reason I think that a lot of people don't realize is lack of temperature control. So when you have big swings in your fermentation temperature between like day and night, and you're swinging like you know seven eight degrees and higher, um, and that could cause some some issues in the, the taste that you're getting from your beers. So you want to make sure that you're holding a somewhat constant temp ranging between a, a, a couple degrees um, through day and night. That is really key for brewing is holding that right temperature. Um, and also, some people have kind of said this, and I, I read this a few places, and we did mention this in our original blog post, that sometimes the water that you use can kind of cause an off-flavor. So if you're using water that's uh, you know high in chlorine or has a alkaline taste to it and is noticeable in the beer, um, you know you want to make sure that could lead to bad beer because water is the main ingredient in beer. You can't get beer without water. Uh, so you make sure that you know, you're using natural spring water, you know, avoid... Um, tap water that is high in like chlorine or just has a notable taste to it. I mean, if your tap water tastes fine, you can taste it smell. You're most likely fine. For more references on the water to use, go watch our earlier brew talk video when we talk about the best type of water to use in your home brew. Uh, the last one is insufficient time for brewing. So you want to make sure that you're following the directions that are provided with your recipe or refill, and you want to give the yeast a proper amount of time to eat up all those sugars. So if you you know, get a batch and the first bottle tastes off or something just doesn't taste right, then let your beer age. You want to let those bottles sit out at room temperature for a little bit longer and you'll be dramatically happy with how well the beer can improve over that time. Um, some beers are good young, some beers are good age, and it just depends on if you have an off flavor or not. Sometimes from fermentation you get an off flavor, you know, in three weeks, four weeks from the bottle, that can clean up and it can be a really good beer. So that's why we always, unless it's terribly bad, we always recommend not, not tossing a beer if you can avoid it because you never know what can happen. Um, you know, during that process, it's easy to get uh, off flavors out of there. You know, bottle conditioning works very well. That's why we have in all of our instructions that our brewmaster's tip talks about, you know, after two weeks of carbonation, put one bottle, one bottle, one bottle, one bottle every single week till you hit that sweet spot. You can even skip weeks if you want to wait a little longer just to see how the impact of the beer is. But it's interesting to see how beer tastes different as it ages. And some beers improve greatly, some beers don't, but it also depends on your personal preference. I usually drink all my beers young because I make a lot of IPAs and bitter beers and stuff like that. So I enjoy the tops of flavors, the aromas, but even like the stouts and stuff I make, I usually drink those pretty quick because when things age and they get mellow, it's just not, it doesn't fancy my style. Um, so that's going to wrap it up for today. I appreciate you guys taking time to watch again. I hope you learned something. Um, we do post our videos on our Facebook page, uh, YouTube page, Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest, and on our blog, mystery.com. We'll have all the notes on our blog page at mystery.com as well. If you have any questions or research, go check out our blog. There's a ton of stuff in there. I mean, it's been around for like five, six years now. So a lot of history, a lot of cool things. And we're kind of revamping, re reviving some old stuff to get it back up top for you guys. Um, if you enjoyed the video, give us a like, share, a thumbs up, comment. We really appreciate that. Also, if you have not, make sure to join our Facebook group. We're getting close to 1,000 members. We're working our way up there. It's a fun group. All kinds of cool stuff in there. I think there may be a coupon code in there that expires at the end of February. So... Hop on in there and check it out. It's a cool place to hang out. Hope you guys have a great weekend. Do some brewing. Drink some home brews. Cheers.